Hi, I'm Sierra Morris and this is Checking the Chicks. In this video, I'll be talking about how to prevent mites and lice in your backyard flock. Mites and lice can be a terrible problem that's very costly to eradicate and labor intensive. The better situation is to never encounter these pests at all. Hopefully these tips will prove useful to you in keeping your flock healthy and safe from mites and lice. Mites and lice are parasites which feed on other creatures like your backyard chickens to survive. You'll recognize them by their straw-colored or red bodies. They're very small and round, almost as small as the very tip of a pin. They are very tiny, but they are visible to the naked eye. They are round and have six legs. They tend to hang out on chickens in areas that you might not necessarily readily look at, like around their vent area, right against their skin and at the base of their feathers. That's another reason that seasonal health checks and regular health checks are very important to catch the first signs of these creatures if they appear in your flock. Before you notice the mites themselves, you may notice other undesirable symptoms developing within your flock, which might indicate that you have a mice or light issue developing. Those symptoms would be things like unchecked diarrhea, sudden and unexplained weight loss, swollen or displaced scales on their toes and legs, pale combs or wattles, bloody spots on their legs, or unexplained bare patches missing feathers. Again, be sure to check the vent area because that's where mites and lice tend to congregate. All of that sounds pretty awful and undesirable, right? So what are the best ways that you can prevent mice and lice from ever appearing in your backyard flock, in your coop, or in your run area? The number one thing you can do to prevent mice and lice from appearing in your flock is to keep those areas clean. I can't oversell or overemphasize how important general hygiene, coop, and run maintenance are to your flock's overall health, happiness, and productivity. A clean coop is not going to attract a lot of the pests or create a lot of the conditions that are going to prove detrimental to your flock. Daily and seasonal maintenance of your coop and run are absolutely key. And I'm not going to deny that cleaning a coop and a run can be a labor-intensive task, but these are a few of the things that I do to make it easier and make it a job that's just overall better for me to keep up with. I keep my cleaning tools in the coop itself. If you don't have enough room to do this, you can store them in a weatherproof container close to your chicken area. Any way that you can reduce your steps and keep your cleaning tools right by your chicken's area makes it easier to use them. I do daily cleans and then we do deep seasonal cleans as well. So every day I'm scraping poop from their perches, from their roosts, from their toys, from the nest boxes. It's important to keep your chicken litter clean by whichever method you've chosen to use. Whether you're using deep litter bedding method or whether you're choosing the spot clean method where you're just picking up the heavily soiled spots and replacing that with fresh litter and then seasonally changing out the entire litter pack. Whatever method you've chosen to use, just make sure that your chickens are not walking on excessive amounts of droppings and mud. As part of the cleaning regimen that I use, remember the natural Castile soap mix that I talked about that I use to clean the inside of my coop and my run and all of my chicken accessories. Again, just a reminder, do not use regular harsh cleaning chemicals. Only use natural cleaners in your coop and run and around your chickens because harsh cleaning chemicals could harm or kill your chickens. I use a natural Castile soap spray. In addition to spraying this on the perches, nest boxes, and just the coop in general, all the shelf areas to clean that, I also use it as a perimeter spray and just spray it along the inside of my coop just to make the coop a little less inviting for parasites like lice and mites. If you bring new chickens into your flock, whether they're babies or whether they're adult birds, make sure you're observing at least a 30-day isolation period. Many chicken diseases are communicable diseases, meaning they can spread throughout your flock very quickly. And a lot of times people will unknowingly introduce mites or lice to their existing flock by bringing in new birds and not observing that isolation period first to make sure that the birds are healthy. If you guys have additional questions about what an isolation plan looks like or would like to see what we do, let me know in the comments. I would be happy to dedicate a whole video to what an isolation plan looks like or what has worked for us. 
But again, if you're bringing in new birds, whether they're young birds or adult birds, make sure you're observing that isolation period to make sure that they're totally healthy before introducing them to your existing flock. Your chickens need access to a dust bath all year round to be healthy. This is something I didn't know about prior to having my own backyard chickens, how they actually keep themselves clean is by a dust bath. So they will use their dust bath to get dirt and other kinds of things off of their skin and off of their feathers. And this is how they keep themselves clean. And this is what they use to prevent mites and lice just on their own. They can take excellent care of themselves if they have access to a dust bath. We use a combination of clean fill dirt and wood ash in our dust bath. We don't use just ash because I would be concerned about how dusty the ash would be and they could aspirate it. It could get into their wee little nose holes and cause respiratory issues, which is the same reason that you don't use play sand in a chicken area. It's much better if you're going to use sand to use coarse sand, something that's not gonna be small and get stuck in their nose and in their respiratory tract. But we fill our dust bath with wood ash from our fireplace and the wood is not treated wood. It is fallen wood from our property. It doesn't have any chemicals on it. And then in combination with clean fill dirt. You can also add a small portion of diatomaceous earth, the food grade kind, to their dust bath to help them get rid of mites. If you don't have access to clean wood ash, it is also available to be purchased by the bag. Diatomaceous earth, it's very important. Again, I want to reiterate, you don't use the pesticide kind, you use the food grade kind. And there will actually be pictures of animals on the packaging for the food grade diatomaceous earth. So even though they're not ingesting it, it's very important to not use the pesticide diatomaceous earth. Make sure you get the food grade diatomaceous earth. And I would spread this very conservatively if you're going to use it by itself on roost poles or in nest boxes just a little bit because again, it's that powdery texture. You don't want them to accidentally inhale it, but sprinkling it very conservatively around your coop and run is another way to reduce the presence of mice and lice. Or again, you can introduce that to their bath and then they'll apply it to themselves whenever they utilize their dust bath. A dust bath container does not have to be fancy. We repurposed planters as our dust bath container, but you can also make a dust bath from spare tires. There's all sorts of designs and different containers that people have used online to create a dust bath area for their chickens. And the last tip I'll share is be sure, in addition to making sure that your coop and run litter is clean, that you are using a coop and run litter of some kind. There are debates about what kinds of litter you can use in different areas. Straw is not recommended for a run because it tends to retain moisture and can in fact create a lot of the conditions that perpetuate disease and health issues among chickens. So while we utilize straw in our nest boxes and in our coop, we don't use it in our run because our run has more moisture in it. So out there, we use pine shavings. We have found that has been the safest, most ideal litter bedding for our chickens, but other people again use coarse sand, or other things like that, I would just emphasize whatever kind of litter you choose, make sure that it's safe for their feet. So I use the rule of thumb, if I wouldn't walk on it in bare feet, then I will not let my chickens walk on it because again, small punctures or holes in their skin on their feet can cause other problems as well. So I wouldn't recommend mulch, but there are a variety of kinds of coop and run litters out there. There are gonna be different kinds that are gonna serve you best for your particular situation, but we use pine shavings. I hope this video contains some helpful information for you about how to prevent mice and lights from appearing in your backyard flock. If you find that you already have an infestation, there are many over-the-counter natural and chemical treatments for mites for you to select the solution that will be the best for you. Thank you to all of you for supporting my growth on YouTube and for being here for the beginning of my channel. I hope to continue to expand it as well as the different offerings that are available and include more educational materials about backyard chickens and homesteading. It's my sincere desire to make this lifestyle more accessible, simple, and easier to understand for everyone. I very much appreciate your support. It means a lot to me, more than you know. If you're enjoying my content, please like, share, and subscribe. We would love to have you as part of our flock. Lots of love from our coop to yours. See you next time.